My name is Boyd Sharp. I'm 39 years old. I'm an IT guy. I work in an office all day, and uh, I am in the biggest rut. I need a reason to get out of bed in the morning, and uh, I don't have it. Yeah, yeah. Boyd has no background in mixed martial arts, but somehow he came up with the idea of, hey, I want to try this. Here we go, here we go. Oh, yeah. some heart here, let's go. Yeah. I've never been in a fight in my entire life, but in one year, I'm going to get in a mixed martial arts cage and fight a professional fight. You better get up and fight. When I told people that I was going to do this, they said, A, you're nuts, and B, can I come too? You better get up and fight. And I'm just trying to show that ordinary people, when they put their minds to it, can do extraordinary things. It's not every day you meet a 40-year-old who works a nine-to-five office job with three kids at home who decides he wants to become a professional mixed martial arts fighter. It's even more rare when there are 25 more just like him. Boyd Sharp and the rest of the Cubes are into their third month of full-on MMA training under head instructor Peter Martel. Lunges around the outside. They all aspire to step into the cage after one year of training. They've been through two rounds of grueling tryouts, months of intense conditioning and technique training, and endured a 24-hour weight cut that pushed them past their physical and mental breaking points. Now, back in the gym, Peter is pushing them as hard as he ever has. You guys having a party over there? What's going on? How about you push yourself? If you can stop and talk and laugh and smile at the person next to you, you're not working hard. Let's go! You guys have a joke? Move it! Let's go! Ah, 20 seconds! With hard work, though, comes rewards for their effort. Don't look like you're beaten, okay? I don't want to see this. Stand up, be proud, look strong. All of your efforts have paid off a little bit. I'd like to introduce Ian. Ian is with Chaco. We heard about you guys back in the West Coast. You know, all this tweeting and Facebook, and uh, it's got such a big hype there, and I had to come over to come see you guys and see what's happening here. So we thought we'll give you a little gift and uh, present you with some gear that you can take and use. And uh, maybe you'll carry on with martial arts and helps the industry, helps martial arts, helps yourselves. When those doors went up and we saw that gear, I was A, exhilarated and excited, and B, I knew that they were weapons of war and they were boxing gloves that were going to enable people to punch me in the face. Man, a gym just ain't a gym without this. That's a wicked, that's like Christmas. That's nice to <laughs> Guys, make sure the cup is the right size. You can't swap those. Best part, cups that don't stink. Thank you. <laughs> that, is, that size small, it's definitely for you. Small you. <laughs> Must be yours. <laughs> A week earlier, the Cubes received some basic apparel, but now with a full fighting kit, it legitimizes their quest even more. This also allows the Cubes to spar for the first time. Hey guys, since we have some gear to spar with now, we're gonna spar. Which will undoubtedly result in some more Cubes quitting. But for now, they're all happy to have made it this far. Heard people who've heard about what we're trying to do, and they're like, these guys are really not training MMA. They're really not going to train like professionals. But when they come in, they see that we're doing everything the pros do. We're doing it six days a week. We're sacrificing our home lives, our work lives, putting 100% of ourselves in it. Then they get behind it. They are still very much green amateurs. But Peter is making an exception and feels Morteza Shai is ready to fight now. 
Morteza is from Iran and has been a kickboxer since he was young, but has never fought an MMA fight. He has had some problems focusing during training, but technically, he is the best cube in the group, and he'll fight in the cage for the first time on an MMA card Peter is promoting. He's got a fight coming up. It's his first pro MMA fight. <laughs> He's uh, a little bit greasy. You can sneak up to me now, would you? I broke my ear, man. He is the first cube to fight. A super nice guy, um, generous, friendly, just a lot of people don't know how to take him. Um, I think he's a great guy. He's just not focused. Um, he's got the potential to be a good fighter, but he may have a problem where he already thinks he is a great fighter. Mortez's father sent him to Canada to get an education and make something of himself. My family, they wanted me to become a world champion since I was a kid. Everybody is the athlete in my, in my family. Like, all of my cousins, are, all of them are fighting, like, even my brother. And then there's a competition, like, everybody, like, the thing is, my, father, my dad told me that you must finish your university, you must become a world champion, and yeah, you, you must do good at all of them. And to get to give me a really good opportunity to improve myself. Morteza retains an elite level of fitness while going to university full time and working at a pizza shop. I don't really like to work in a pizza shop, but, but I have to right now. It's just my temporary job. Delicious pizza, the most delicious pizza ever. There you go. What is that here? Jamie Hall, Roger Hollett, Jeff Black. Ricky Goodall, Pat Carroll, and Morteza Shahi. Hey, uh, this is going to be my first pro fight in my life. And I'm so happy for it, I'm ready. I'm gonna win the fight. I have training hard for this fight. He's really doing good. He's an active guy, and uh, he takes his job serious, and he's uh, working hard on it. So I'm pretty sure like, uh, he's gonna have a bright future in what he's doing, definitely. He's always late. When he picks me up, if he's coming home, he's late. If he makes up a form, he's late. He's born late, basically. But hopefully that's not going to affect his fighting. But definitely, he's late for everything. I'm always late. Like, I think it's going to finish my job. Like, usually I have to be at 6 every day, right? They always know that I'm late and I'm at the gym. Morteza here! Always being late might end up costing Morteza, who's now late for his official weigh-in. Shahi, You're not gonna elbow your partner. You can show the elbow, but do not make contact, okay? Gentle. Right now, the potential for you to hurt each other is probably the greatest until you become skilled. The Cubes are in their third month of MMA training with the aspiration of fighting a professional fight in one year. But one cube is standing out beyond the rest. Head trainer Peter Martel found a fight for Morteza Shai in an upcoming event in Halifax, Nova Scotia. He will leapfrog the entire group and fight his first pro MMA fight if he makes it to his official weigh-in on time. Morteza here! Oh shit, I'm late again. Morteza Shai! Mr. Shai Hai, 158.8. Fighting a guy who is probably better than him on the ground uh, and not as good as him uh, on the feet. So it's, uh, it's a, it's a toss-up. It's going to make for a good fight. There's no doubt that he's a talented striker, but I have questions about whether or not he's a fighter. And... I hope he does well, but a lot remains to be seen. He has such physical abilities. His striking was so crisp when you stand back and, and give him space. If he could learn to apply himself the way Boyd applies himself and had that kind of a focus, I think he'd be an absolute beast. He is probably the kind of guy who needs to lose in, in the cage or in the ring before he's gonna realize that, uh, hey, this is real, this is serious, uh, it's not a game. As Morteza makes the final preparations for his fight, Boyd, Peter, and the rest of the Cubes are getting a private lesson from UFC great Jeremy Horn. 
put this knee on the ground close to him, and then I rotate on my head. Hanging out of his underhook, still got his wrist over here. And then I, I can slide through here nice and snug. Horn has over 100 pro MMA fights to his credit and has fought and beaten some of the legends of the sport. He was in Halifax, scheduled to fight on the same card as Morteza. Oh, yeah, post your weight on that leg. There you go, left leg. Yep. He's probably seen it all and done it all. Like, he's been doing this for years, and he's fought, you know, the elite of the sport. He's a, he's a legend. Uh, so for us to have him, uh, you know, uh, I'm pretty excited. I think the Cubes are pretty excited. This, this is fantastic. Uh, it's a privilege and an honor to have Jeremy here. He's uh, one of the most experienced MMA fighters in the world. Going from a nobody to a fighter is one thing. Going from a fighter to a good fighter that makes a living in the UFC, that's, that's a different step. So, yeah, I mean, anybody could go from, you know, a tub of goo sitting on the couch to a reasonable athlete that fights and, and does okay. You know, they're not going to win all of them, but get somebody in there that's competitive. I see what you're saying. Okay, you, you know, everybody reacts differently to fighting, uh, getting hit, you know, running into some, some adversity. I mean, those are things that are somewhat intangible until, until they happen. Some people are just born fighters. Some people are just born not fighters. Focus on this, pull his foot. Peter is hoping that Morteza is indeed a fighter. Morteza is gonna be fighting a guy who's basically a lot bigger than him. Uh, Morteza came in underweight by five pounds, and this guy came in overweight by a few pounds. So by the time he loads back up, is gonna be fighting a big guy. Uh, it takes a lot of skill to overcome that. You have to be a lot better than him. Uh, if it's even close, often that big guy is gonna win. Uh, you know, so we're hoping that things go well for Morteza. I think I think he's gonna win. I think he's got the tools to, to do well. Yeah. In addition to Morteza stepping into the cage for the first time, two other cubes, Nikki and Ashley will be performing a Muay Thai exhibition on the undercard prior to Morteza's fight. This demonstration fight is often used so fighters can gain experience in the cage. Sparring with each other in front of a live crowd helps to prepare them for what will hopefully someday be a real fight against a real opponent. Kind of intimidating looking at that cage and thinking that we're gonna be in it soon. I'm gonna fall walking up the stairs, P.S., just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I've never been in a ring before. I've never been in a ring or a cage no. before either. At the beginning of this, it was just a, an opportunity. And now that I've done it and I've committed the time to it and the hours to it, now I want to I wanna go and see how far I can go. Not so long ago, in like 2010, 2011, I used to weigh about 240 pounds. I want to push. I want to see what I can do. You know, no excuses and just do it. This is all a great experience, Remember? right? No kicks to the head. <laughs> well, you're not going easy. You're going to go yep. hard, just like you did the club, okay? But remember, you're teammates, okay? So if you see that you hurt the other person, you're going to back off, let them recover, okay? You're putting on a show, it's an exhibition. Yep. You're not over here to put each other down, okay? Yep. Understand? Yes. Good, okay. Good luck with you. Backstage, Morteza is busy getting ready to do battle. I can remember my heart beating when, when we were in the room with Morteza uh, and he's warming up and uh, you know, he's talking a bit of smack, I think, from what I can understand. I can't really understand Morteza, so I'm not really sure what he was saying, but he looked like he was talking smack. He was so excited and he was doing the whole false bravado, oh, I'm gonna kill this guy, and I just had this unease. Before the fight thing is, I knew that I'm gonna win the fight even when I was in the changing room. As soon as I put my MMA gloves on, the thing is, I exactly came from 69 gloves to four ounce gloves. Before I used to have 69 ounce gloves on, in front of my face, and then as soon as I put four ounce gloves on my hand, I saw that my face empty. He's gonna rush you. He's not gonna wanna stand back and swing at you. He's gonna try to take you down, okay? Yeah. Come on, let's keep going. Listen to it. Listen, I really want you to listen, okay? Okay. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. 
This is you. Enjoy this, okay? There's a thousand people here watching you, okay? Enjoy this. After three months in a grueling fitness regime, 30 ordinary people continue to their goal of fighting a pro mixed martial arts fight in one year. Morteza Shai is an obvious talent who was chosen to step in the cage much sooner than anyone else for his first professional fight. And all of the other cubes were there to support him. When you're fighting in a sport like mixed martial arts, although it's an individual sport and you're the only one in the cage that's fighting, it really, really makes a huge difference when you have that family there and that team there to support you. Well, I was really nervous in the beginning. I was really nervous. I started, I walked in the cage. I, was, I got very nervous for the fight. Nice and relaxed. Look. Come here, come here, come here. Hand up. Stick that jab in his face, okay? Make him pay. Stiff jab in his face every time, okay? I don't want you to throw any fancy kicks or anything back. You're going to try to take you down. So stick shots at him. Punch him in the face. Make him afraid of you, okay? Stay him down. Like a big clown in there, like a big teddy bear. He's gonna get mad. He's gonna Morteza, get angry in there. Get after him! Hands up, Morteza, hands up. Kick those legs, he's turned sideways. Push on that face. He's gonna burn his gas tank out here. Okay, get inside control, Morteza. Just relax here. Throw him up, 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 up. Ah. There you go. Push off, push off. He's gassed now, Morteza. Hands, Morteza, hands, hands. Hands. Make him pay for that sloppy shit. Let's go. Morteza got hit with a big shot, knocked down, knocked out. He... Morteza is better than that. Morteza's fight was completely winnable for him. Uh, Morteza's problem is that he did not listen. As soon as I went to the cage, crown too much sand, and that was my first fight in a cage. And the cage was so shiny, everybody was so shiny, everybody was yelling. And he mentally was not there. You know, he was somewhere else. He thought he was somebody that was unbeatable, somebody that I don't even have to take this seriously. I don't really even have to pay attention to what's going on. I'm just going to go in and kick this guy's ass. And you know, it's it's mental. He did the exact same thing that Peter has told him a hundred times not to do. He went straight backwards away from an attacking opponent. That's only going to end one way, and a knockout was it. You understand what you did? You get in a brawl with a guy whose only skill is brawling. Remember I told you, stick, move, push, move. And he's swinging and you stand there and swing with him. That's the only thing he's got. You should have moved away, pushed away. Clean. Losing that fight had a profound effect on Morteza, much more so than, than I thought it would have had. I think, in some ways, who he thought he was for 10, 15 years was shattered in his mind that night. He was a broken man. Uh, there was no way to pull him out of it. He was just completely depressed. He was completely lost. He was despondent. Uh, he was unlike I'd, I'd ever seen him before in my life. He was just so depressed. But he was also quite humble and quite honest with himself. This fight was mine, not his. I didn't get it so serious, that's about it. 
Because I used to explore with him, and I was better than him. Like, two words better than him, exploring. I never got a CES. That was my big mistake. I wasn't thinking about my kicks, I wasn't thinking about my boxing. It's my big mistake. And I'm sorry for my teammates, my coach, my friends, everybody who was supporting me. That was my big mistake. And I learned that from that, this mistake that I should take everything serious. That's about it. The thing you gotta realize is in this sport is when you become a fighter is someone has to lose and someone has to win. But you know what? At the end of the fucking day is these people that came to see you, the thousands of people that came to see you, they don't have the nuts to do it, and you did. If you're a real fighter, on Monday you will be back in the gym and you're gonna work harder than you ever worked. That's what that's what a loss, that's what a champion does. You just suffer defeat which I have too. And it made me work harder and harder and harder. And I never want to ever feel that again, do you? Okay, Monday, get your ass back in the gym, work hard, stop talking shit, stop being funny Muteza, get to work, don't say shit. If you want to be a champion, that's what you gotta do, okay? Thanks, man. That's the way it is. It was a pretty low time. Uh, I think a lot of us were questioning if we really wanted to do this because we were feeling so depressed and is this really where we want to be as a broken team a year from now? It was a hard night for Team Titans. The club had very difficult matchups and lost most of their fights. Not a great night. We lost a lot of fights that night. And again, it's just the way, just the way things go. If you never lose in life, if you never, you never experience the pits, the, the lows of life, how the f are you ever gonna experience the highs? You know, how are you ever gonna learn from life? How are you ever gonna learn from, from tripping and falling? You know, that's the only way you can, you can figure out what to fix. Uh, so no, don't, don't apologize. I said you're going to the after party, right? Yeah, sure. Pals, yeah? Okay, shots from me. Don't worry about it, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. The good thing is, out of all of this, they've seen some of our fighters get knocked out. They've seen some of our fighters training tear their knees, uh, get choked unconscious, have their arms popped, and they're still here. So that says something about them now. They know what can happen. They know what's around the corner. Um, you know, they can be sitting on top of that cage with their arms raised in the air saying, you know, uh, this is the best feeling in the world. Or they can be waking up and going, where the hell am I? Uh, but they're still here, so that says something about them. Next time on Cubicle to the Cage, Morteza and the rest of the cubes are still rattled by the knockout, and Rick feels he's better off on his own. This leads Peter to question whether or not any of the other cubes will ever be ready to fight. We're halfway through, and you guys are a fing mess. Yeah, yeah. Now here we go. Yeah, yeah. Come on. All right, now here we go. Here we go. Yo, like a doormat, like a flat hell from the weight of the days that y'all seem the same. Are you slipping past the limit of all you can take? Unsteady the everyday. Are you ready to break? You better get up and fight. You better get up and fight. Yeah, yeah. You better get up and fight. Better get up and fight. So. Up, knocked down and kicked around on the hard ground Trying to make your way through the background Trying to get ahead but you're bled tough But the luck still stuck in the rough Have you had enough? Said have you had enough? Now have you had enough? Nah man, you better get up and fight